Hi there, I hope you guys tried out the challenge and this is the visual scripting solution for the challenge one. So we'll make sure you are using the challenge one visual scripting scene and let's go inside of our challenge one graph. Now, if you're using visual scripting, one thing you can actually do is run the game and write the solution. You can rerun the scene by clicking R and that will save you time from having to wait for the play to start. So let's do that. I actually have a visual scripting layout and let's start creating the code. The first thing that I wanna do is go into play mode. You can use control P to go in play mode. And we're starting with a score of zero and all of our tests are failing because we're not doing anything in our script. So let's get our enemy to move. And for that, we can use transform, translate. Using this X, Y, Z option is gonna be easier for visual scripting, so let's use that. And in here, all we have to do is pass the speed that we want to move in per second. And the front of our enemy is in the X direction, so that is where we want to pass it. Now, if we connect that on update, you can see that our enemies are moving and we actually pass two of the tests, one and two for the movement test and the speed test. Now the test three and four are rotation. So let's rotate our player and make sure that when we're moving that the bottom enemy is actually gonna be moving towards the waypoint. I already provided a way of getting the first item from the waypoints, so we're actually gonna use that and calculate the direction that we want to move. The easiest way to set the direction in Unity is by using transform right, up or forward. Our front direction is actually right, so that's what we want to actually set. So transform set right, and in here we want to pass in the direction vector. That way you can calculate the direction vector is the difference between the point where you're trying to move and the point that you currently located at. Now the point that we're trying to move is the first waypoint, which we get right here. So we can get the position from this transform object. And from this transform object, we can subtract our current position. So let's get position of our current enemy. And this is going to be the direction vector and we can pass it as right. So if we set that and refresh it, you can see that our bottom enemy is actually facing towards the first waypoint. Now if we connect the translate, it's going to start moving the character towards that. Once the enemies reach the first waypoint, you can see that it's stuck there because it's always trying to move towards that waypoint. So now the next challenge is to actually increment the waypoints and make sure once we reach that waypoint, we move towards the next one. Let's move these nodes around to make it a little bit cleaner. And now we need a way to check if we have reached the waypoint. So we already have the difference between the waypoint and the current position. What we can do now is get a vector magnitude and that will give us a scalar value of the distance between the waypoint and our enemy. And we can do a comparison check if the distance is less than 0.1, then we'll say that the enemy reached that waypoint. So let's add an if statement here and pass the result of this check. If that is true, then we want to move to the next point. And since we are using the index variable here to retrieve the current waypoint, all we have to do is increment the index by one, and that's gonna look for the next waypoint. So i get the current one, and we want to add a scalar of one, set that as the new value, and we wanna do that once it's true. And you can see that our bottom enemy just continues through those waypoints. Now we have successfully passed all of the tests except the seventh one. And the seventh one is checking if we destroy the enemy once we reach the end. Also, if you take a look at Unity, you can see that there is an error that we're getting and it is the index was out of range. 
The reason why we're getting that is because we have incremented the index and it has reached the end of the list that we have and it was trying to access the next item and that's what's creating that index out of range. So what we have to do is make sure that we never execute this code if our index is higher than what's available in our array. And we can actually use the same check to see if we have reached the end. So that works great for two of our purposes. To do that, we'll create another if statement here. And in here, we need to check and make sure that the index is less than the size of our waypoints. And I did put the nodes here that you can use for that. So count items, pass that here, and we can pass that check inside here. So if the index is greater or equal to the count, that means that we have reached the end of our waypoint array. But if this is actually true, then we can still run this code, which can be moving through those waypoints. Now, I also said we want to remove the enemy once we reach the endpoint. So that's where you can use the false flow and look at object and destroy and pass this as the object. So the visual scripting solution looks a little bit messier than the C sharp version. Let me clean it up a little bit and let's we run it so you can actually see that the score is 100 because once we added that if statement it actually destroys those enemies so let's rerun it and watch all of the tests be completed there we go so all the tests are completed and if i clear the errors and rerun it we should not see those errors come up so no errors we're getting 100 percent score so here is the full solution to the challenge. Now, if you haven't seen the C sharp solution to the challenge, I would recommend to watch that and you'll see how the things are similar and that might help you with learning C sharp. I hope you enjoyed this challenge and I'll see you in the next one.